Are you ready? Ready for this? Ready for some action? Ready for me? I mean, and another another danger inherent in all this is the cop in your own. Do you sincerely want to be rich? Now, this is lesson one from the course Seven Secrets of the Millionaires by Stuart Goldsmith. Do you sincerely want to be rich? It's a simple question. Think for a short while about the changes it would bring to your life. Imagine winning several million pounds on the lottery. Would your life be better? What makes a millionaire? Why are some people wealthy and others poor? Are there secrets which the ordinary person can learn which will improve their chances of making a million pounds? Yes. Oh, and by rich, I mean in excess of 10 million pounds. These days, you are not rich if you have 1 million. Although, not pocket change, a million in the bank would merely allow you to live in moderate comfort for the rest of your days. You would have to be careful with money. You would not be extravagant. 1 million in disposable capital would give you around 50,000 sterling a year after tax, which is around about 75,000 US dollars and a lot less than a good company director gets. The million would slowly be eaten away by inflation until it was worth just 350,000 pounds in today's buying, sorry, today's buying power in about 15 years. Hardly a king's ransom, I think you'll agree. One million pounds buys you a decent house in the south of England. And that's all. After you've bought the house, all the money is gone. And there would not be a penny left to furnish it, pay the bills, or for living expenses. No. The days are long gone when becoming a millionaire was a crazy dream. Being a millionaire is not what it used to be. A millionaire in 1900 would have the equivalent of 100 million pounds in today's money. 10 million now? Ah. Now we're talking sensible money. 10 million today is worth the same as 1 million used to be worth in the 1950s. A millionaire really was someone before 1950. With 10 million in the bank, you can spend about 250,000 pounds a year, about 20,000 a month, and still have modest growth on your capital. But you would be in the bottom echelons of the wealthy, knocking for admittance to the fringes of their outer circle. Interestingly, if your 10 million was ever reduced to 1 million, you would be just described as flat broke by your new circle of friends. People would talk about you in hushed and sympathetic voices they would turn away and cough politely as you walked into a room. This would not be snobbery, just embarrassment and pity for one reduced to such poverty. He's down to his last million. Oh, the poor, poor dear boy. The point here is perspective. When you've had 10 or 100 million, this level of wealth seems normal for you. To be down to your last million really is flat broke. An horrific state to be in. In contrast, when you have an overdraft and exist on a pittance, then a paltry £10,000 feels like a staggeringly large pile of cash, a gleaming mountain of gold, and a million. Well, this seems unimaginable. A sum of money which simply cannot be held in the mind. It is so vast. It is this sense of perspective which aids the rich person and hampers the poor. 
If you have made a few million, how do you think you view your chances of making it again? If you were to lose it. Bit of a nuisance, right? An irritation. But a ludicrous fantasy? A crazy, impossible dream? Hardly. So do you think people with this attitude manage to make a million again if they lose it? Yes, they do, no problem. Often they do it several times over, if they are particularly careless with money. But when you are broke and have never managed to accumulate more than a fiddly, fiddling 10,000 in small change at any one time, how do you think you view the possibility of making a million or 10 million? This appears to be an unscalable mountain, the dizzy heights of which tower to infinity above you, a mere mortal. These slopes seem impossible to climb. You cannot imagine how another person could have climbed to that lofty peak, let alone the hundreds of thousands, possibly millions, who have done so before you. There are over one million dollar. There are over one million dollar millionaires in the USA alone. How hard can it be? Certainly not impossible. In your more frustrated moments, you feel these people must have somehow cheated and caught a ski lift to the top or been airlifted to the summit. Yet you know this cannot be true. A few might have sneaked to the top by a subterfuge, but a million or more? Not likely. The truth is that such a large horde of people have trampled this path to the summit that they have left a deeply worn channel for you to follow, if you care to. Look upwards and you will see a long queue of people waiting for their turn at the peak. It's very crowded up there. Yet your doubt alone prevents you from following. You don't really believe you can do it. In contrast, those who have made it and lost it know with 100% ice cold certainty that they can make this kind of money again. They've done it once, they'll do it again if need be. It is this certainty which allows them to repeat their previous success. Sure, they have some technical knowledge and experience which comes in handy the second or third time. But the real secret is their belief. They believe they can do it. Actually, they know they can do it. A poor person is filled with doubt and indecision. This prevents them from taking action. They are afraid to fail when really nothing to lose. If you're broke, what can you lose? Nothing. Only fear holds you back. Raw, naked fear takes many forms. One form is in the statement, I don't want to be rich. Doubtless there are people for whom this is true, but I've never met such a person. I have met many people who have told me this lie but they are exposed immediately. Most of them do the lottery. I have yet to meet a person who would turn down a lottery win of 10 million because they didn't want to be rich. A more honest statement would be, I want to be rich, but I'm not prepared to pay the price to become wealthy. Fair enough, but at least that's coherent. And I'll be talking about paying the price in a later lesson. But I don't want to be rich, come now. So I ask you again and think at this stage of your life, you owe yourself the answer. Do you sincerely want to be wealthy? One million plus. It's a simple question. Think for a short while about the changes it would make to your life. Imagine winning several million pounds on the lottery. What would change? Would your life be better? Time's up! If you need more than five seconds to think about that one, you're in trouble. Of course, life would be better. At the very least, you have you would have more choices. It would be fun, exciting, invigorating, powerful, wonderful. Forget those where are they now lottery winning misery stories slopped out for the TV viewing masses. You know the stories about how they blew all the cash on toys, got divorced, ruined the kiddies and lost all their friends. Now they wish they'd never had the money. Close up on bleached blonde, hard faced mum with a tear trickling down one cheek. We was happier when we had nothing. 
at least we had each other. That money was a curse, that's what it was. A curse, I tell you. If I won it again, I'd give it all away. So help me gold. Forget all that. These stories are part of the conspiracy to keep you poor. In real life, money makes a big difference. It can't buy you health, and it can't guarantee you genuine success in human relationships. And it cannot ensure happiness. That is an internal state. But it certainly improves your chances in all of these things. And the rest is yours for the asking. By the way, in case you hadn't noticed, poverty doesn't do a lot for your health or happiness either. And a lack of money has certainly destroyed millions of marriages over the years. Yeah, so how do you feel about that, really? That is the end of Lesson 1 of Seven Secrets of the Millionaires. And I hope you're really looking forward to Lesson 2. Have you got the balls? I think it's time you got to the Bat Cave and started your life. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? Come on, Robin. To the Batcave. We haven't one moment to lose. Give yourself a hand, folks. Well done. Hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed bringing it to you. Seven Secrets of the Millionaires. We'll do it again next time on episode two. This is Paul from Self Power Publications. Join us on Facebook at the page Self Power Foundation.